we are playing some more Skoatel, and with it, unfortunately, some pretty big mistakes, but we can all learn from them. Uh, so this one happens at, at the pretty much the uh, end of this round. It was a pretty catastrophic mistake. Well, it's 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 kind of difficult to ascertain that ascertain that rather <laughs> in the like uh, exactly why it's just kind of like more of a I guess of a feeling um, or rather you don't know you're making the mistake until you make it. I think is what I mean to say. Uh, basically, I thought that the game was going to go one way, and it went another, and then I lost. I, I lose this entire game. But anyway, so this guy's playing something kind of weird. He's playing these, uh, this three-strength card that copy, makes a bronze copy of a dwarf, or maybe just another bronze card. Uh, and then this, uh, now 12-strength unit here on the melee row, whenever he is basically interacted with his strength in any way, he gains two strength as a boost. It's pretty interesting. So I just start this. I kind of use this a little bit early, but basically I'm just trying to threaten uh, an ice storm or an Igni, trying to get him a little bit scared. I think my game plan at the moment was to um play Zoltan and then play my my spy here, Yavin, and then try and get a 24 value, but he kind of messed that up. But it's all good. And one very important thing to note is that he's playing Ethne. Now, Ethne, of course, allows you to copy a spell. And since he's played multiple spells that he's willing to play his leader ability for, I, that's something I had to constantly be worried about. And the, a big one is Full Moon Potion. Or, uh, yeah, okay, so Full, full Moon Potion. So every time he does that, he's getting, what, 12 and sats? So very, very high tempo. Uh, and I've got to the point where he's roast stacked. And this kind of leads, this is kind of by extension of my previous video where I mentioned you really should be playing uh, Marigold Toastorm. Obviously, in this situation, it's incredibly powerful. But at the same time, I'm, this entire time, I got cut up with one singular thought process that eventually would lose me the game. So I, I just kept thinking, okay, it's Ethne. Uh, he has all these spells in the graveyard. He's getting ready to, you know, a night. He, he, <laughs> he is ready to bring this all the way down to like the last card, to all the cards, right? This is what I'm expecting. Because, uh, you know, going into a later round, he does a lot worse because he doesn't have a lot of units to use overdose with and the like. So this whole time I'm like, man, I'm going to get him. You know, sooner or later, I'm going to have that hailstorm that's going to, you know, knock him out of the park. So I'm just trying to play cards and play cards and play cards. But right around this point, I believe is when I should have made the branch path off to actually go for the hailstorm yeah i think that was the exact turn i should have played hailstorm so he he is very keenly aware <laughs> i'm playing francesca uh we're in the relatively relatively high rank um i'm still working on this i climbed like fifteen thousand ranks in like uh a couple hours but you know as this climb as you go up to the climb you, climb, you, go, up, uh, you go up against players you know what they're doing and what they're trying to what they're going up against uh, so he can he can pretty accurately guess that I either have an Igni or I have a Hailstorm. Now, see, the problem isn't the problem here isn't that I'm going one card down. I'll just go ahead and play this out just so you can see the strength, I, the strength difference. So the whole time I was caught up right in that if I would play Hailstorm early, then he'd just be able to use his uh, his save his stocked up spells to come all the way back up. That's a 46 uh, strength difference. Pretty huge. Okay, so the whole point, it doesn't matter that I win the round by one card down, which is usually good in most situations. Uh, winning, the, winning the round by going one, one card down is pretty good. However, in this particular situation, I could have gotten so much more if I just played a little bit less patient. You know, there's a lot of... There's a, there's a big push for being more patient, but in this case, I was too patient. I waited too long. I was toying with my opponent a little bit, like, because, uh, kind of going into what I was saying, like, I was climbing with like, ranks really fast in this one night that I was actually playing ranked, which I don't do a lot, which is generally why my rank's pretty low. But, uh, in, in that course, like, I wasn't really punished a whole lot for making, like, these kind of plays, like, these overly, like, I fully expected my opponent to keep going and going and going, and then I can just slam him with the Marigold Tail Storm, but obviously this player knew that, um... I needed to cut and he knew that he needed to stop 
when he had the chance, and he got a good chance to get out. And the thing is, going into these later rounds, his deck is a whole lot better than mine, at least in the way that I'm playing it versus the way he's playing it. And he saw his leader ability, which is really powerful in his situation. So we'll go ahead and watch out the rest of this, but that's basically the whole point. Like, be wary of being too patient, I think is the, the key line there. Of course, open pass, go into the next round. I also think I got kind of messed over on my draws here a little bit, which is kind of unfortunate. And also, this is pretty good for him to be able to play this card. It would have been better early, of course, but still. Oh, and also, I want to note that this is also a really cool deck to go up against, and I hope that more innovation and more decks like this arise. So I think it was really cool. Also, I think that, that bron the two bronze cards that he was using are really cool, too. I'm interested in checking those out. The one that copies and the one that uh, changes on uh, based on whether it took damage or is boosted or whatever. I think that there's a lot of synergy with Ethne, and I think there's a lot of potential in a damaging slash weather meta, which um, probably should be popping up here pretty soon. I think Frost Aridin seems relatively strong. At the very least, it seems relatively stable, so long as you're not running too much weather clear, or there's not too much weather clear in the meta. So there's that card going to work. <laughs> Instantly heal two damage, so it's like only to three. Right now, I'm just trying to get my units all lined up to hit this, get hit by this commander's horn. And also, I'm not at all saying that I'm playing this perfectly. I'm totally not. There's, I'm making a lot of mistakes with this deck. This deck takes a lot of learning, I think. There's a lot of nuance to what you're mulliganing and what you're playing and the timings therein. It's really, it's so much different from something like Queen's Guard, which almost follows a script. I'm looking, I played uh, this, um, what's this guy? Whatever, the five strength guy. <laughs> I still really need to learn the names. I played the five strength guy before I played this 11 strength guy, even though I would have gotten one more point on buff because I wanted to try and move a unit uh, to get hit by Igni, if, all, if at all possible. Also, that's something I'm trying to decide whether or not I'm willing to wait another turn and play Commander's Horn early and then play my movement unit just so I can line up Igni. Because Igni could very well win me this game, even though I'm behind by this point. He still had overdoses? Man. It's interesting. This, this deck that I'm going against is very... Like, it snowballs so damn hard. It almost seems like an Axeman deck in, in kind of idea... Or not, maybe not Axeman. Axeman is kind of, it's so much different from what everything else. It's maybe kind of like a spy archetype. Or maybe a uh, Tremorfold. Tremorford. The point is, it snows walls really quickly off getting all these boosts off and having units on the board. Like that. It's crazy. Okay, so I do go for... Okay, I play the unit, then I play the Commander's Horn. Which was actually a mistake. <laughs> I don't think it would have mattered uh, if I played Commander Sworn or not because he was going to pick one of those and I was going to lose. Pretty interesting game. Uh, don't be too patient. Thanks for watching.